I don't think art was something that I grew up around. I think art can be quite an elitist thing and it's still quite a highbrow topic. So um, it's not something that was a part of my everyday life, but I, that didn't stop me from drawing around about the house and doing my mum's furniture. My name is Tracky McLeod and I'm an artist from Glasgow. Sounded a bit blind date, didn't it? <laughs> I'm doing a monoprint just now. Quite enjoy monoprints because they don't take too much effort. <laughs> I'm writing now, that's what I call a lime wire Trojan virus on the family computer because I got into trouble many a time for trying to download a really bad MP3 and it being a virus. I feel like these prints, like, you either get it or you don't because I think if I showed this to my mum, she'd be like, what are you talking about? Because she doesn't even know what a virus is, but... <laughs> Quite niche. Uh, the 90s and noughties has definitely had like, a bit of a revival, um, but I think looking back on that, I think that was the time where like, an integral part of my growing up, so that's why I reference it so much in my work. I think people find like comfort and memories and like looking to the past and I think that I come from quite maybe a nostalgic family we love looking through old photos and sending each other like old videos and all that and laughing. I think football is like an important part of like Glasgow's history. There is an element of toxic masculinity within football and I think that is what gets queer people's back up. Football was always something that was kind of on in like the background of my life and it was something that I was never really particularly good at. But, and I think now the football work that I make kind of laughs at this, like the effort, the levels that I went to to try and fit in to that culture, to want to kind of be a part of something. Hey, ready to rumble? Well, we're just going up to the roof to do some Alan, obviously, as you do. The work with the football tops, the things that are printed on the back were as words that I've experienced myself and I think the point of them being on the back of the football top is just to reclaim them, to wear them like a kind of badge of honour. Yes! Come on! So I've been working on my first solo exhibition which is called Milk Lemonade Chocolate. Uh, the show's a bit of a rite of passage, like along the way unlocking memories of people in places and cultural references that helped form my artistic practice and my Glaswegian identity. Right, this is the plans for my exhibition. It's just a breakdown of all the pieces that are going to be in the show and in the middle is what the show is about. I think there's a level of like vulnerability by opening up and talking about your experiences in such like a public way. But I'm excited for the exhibition. I think because it's my first one, I was obviously going to be apprehensive, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm proud to be from Glasgow. I think that's an important part of my practice. I want to go and try other places. I want to see other places, but I think I'll always come back to Glasgow. So we are walking up the track which is an old abandoned railway track, I believe, uh, which takes you from White Inch to Scotston and beyond. It was good growing up in White Inch. I had a quite a idyllic upbringing, so yeah, it's got a place in my heart. I didn't come out till much later on in life and trying to unpack all that, those ideals that I had on what it means to be a man or like what it means to be a gay man, to be honest. I think when I was younger, I probably tried to blend in to protect myself. Um, like the traditional West of Scotland view of gay people then, it, it wasn't something that was promoted or as accepted as it is now. Now that I can make fun of the things that I would do to fit in and the things, the, the stupid things I did, like being into football and 
wanting to be one of the lads, 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 and even firing into girls. Like, I can now take the piss out of that because that's what it was then, but it's not what it's like now. Now that I'm in that process of doing that, like, it is, there's probably a therapeutic element to it without sounding too. <laughs> <laughs> I think the exhibition for me is more about having a platform with just me. The only other exhibitions that I've done um, has been with other people. So it would be nice to kind of stand alone and say, this is, this is what I'm about. These are my ideas. If you like it, you like it. And if you don't, then unlucky. <laughs> I think being in the heart of the Barrows is it's a, it's a cool venue. I think the history of the Barrowlands is um, very nostalgic. We are at my first solo exhibition called Milk Lemonade Chocolate in the Pipe Factory. It's been a, it's been a stressful week, but I'm kind of glad it's came to an end now and I can enjoy myself. It's probably been a bit of a long time coming. <laughs> uh, I graduated obviously three years ago, so it's been a lot of hard work put into it. So I don't think I imagined that I would have my first solo show, especially over two floors, but I'm excited. I'm gonna show you a bit. <laughs> this tent uh, celebrates kind of school disco. We used to wear like double denim. Inside there's like a disco light. So the lyrics on it are, do you really like it? <laughs> is, it is it wicked? By DJ Pi Piper. Um, it's just a, a tune that reminds me of being wee. This is a home video from maybe 1996, 1997. It's funny seeing yourself at that age and being like, I can't believe that's me. These are the last two football tops in a series of four. Big girls boys, man of the house. There are two conflicting statements that are put onto men, like football tops. I want people to have fun, to not take it too seriously, to find the humour in my work as well as maybe it be thought-provoking. It's nice to know that like, I'm celebrating my upbringing and celebrating the people that I shared it with. My name's Catherine and I'm Connor's mum. I had a little party for him today. I set the table up. I got him balloons and banners and everything like that. And I think he was ready for crying. <laughs> My name's Ashley. I've known Connor since I was around 13. I'm proud of him every day, but more so today. It's not often that someone can use humour in such a really beautiful way. It just brings back memories of when I was younger. It has a sense of humour to it, but on a deeper level, it's, it's really, really um, topical. I don't think you have enough working class artists get to say and speak on a platform and I think he does it really well and it speaks not just to young gay men but young women as well. I'm a really, really, really proud mum. Um, I love him to the moon and back. I'm so happy what he's achieved. I'm buzzing. I'm absolutely buzzing. Like, good turnout. I'm enjoying the fact that people are interacting with the art and having a good time. I never imagined that it would be this successful. I'm grateful for the platform that I've got just now and I think the fact that other people would be able to see my work or a wee queer working class guy would be able to see my work and, and relate to it. I'm a bit proud of myself actually. Aye, I don't know if that's a bit of a brass neck saying that, but aye.